welcome to this podcast. Uh, what we're looking at here is uh, problems with um, angled projectiles. And this example problem, I have uh, students have a sheet of 10 of these problems. And uh, this, the, same, the same problem is the, the one you see on the screen here. Projectile launched with a speed of 50 meters per second and an angle of 35 degrees above the horizontal. And I ask a series of questions. I try to come up with as many of them you can possibly do um, with projectile motion. In the examples that we have, they will know um, how to write vector format for the kinematic equations. And what I mean by that is you have to keep track of x and y direction with the big four kinematic equations. Uh, Vf equals Vi plus At, Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2AD, etc. And uh, if you don't know what that means, that's okay. You'll catch on here as I, I use my labels on my equations. So the first problem here, find the horizontal and vertical components of an object's initial speed. So as this projectile is launched from the cannon, it's going to have some kind of initial speed in both the x and y directions. So it's launching at 50 overall, but it's going to have a speed in the x direction, as labeled down here, v in the x direction initially, and over here, v in the y direction initially. In projectile motion, you have to keep track of both x and y axes separately because there's no common link except for time. So how do we solve for these? Well, as a kind of a review, we can talk about SOHCAHTOA, the, the cosine and sine concepts here. And let's say I want to solve for the adjacent side of this, which is the velocity in the x direction initially. Well, that's the adjacent side to this angle right here, so the angle's right here. And so the cosine of that angle is defined as the adjacent side, Vxi, velocity in the x direction initially, divided by the hypotenuse 50. If I want to solve for Vxi, I multiply both sides by 50, and it comes out to be the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta is equal to the velocity in the x direction initially. So I write that out over here. The velocity in the x direction initially is the launching speed, the v naught as it's read, so the overall speed of our projectile being launched, times the cosine of theta. So that's going to be 50 times the cosine of 35. So v naught's 50, theta's 35. That comes out to be 40.96 meters per second. Same concept for v y i. This is the opposite side. So that is going to be using the sine, and that's going to be the same thing, except you got v y i, and it's going to be the sine. It's still going to end up being the hypotenuse times the sine of theta. So the initial speed in the y direction is going to be the launching speed 50 times the sine of 35, whoops, and that ends up being 28.63 meters per second. So one of the first things you'll probably have to do is break down your initial speeds in the x and y directions. You've got to know what those are. Sometimes maybe you don't even want to round these off. I'm going to try to round all these numbers off here that I have to two decimal places. And uh, if you don't want to do that, just use 50 cosine 35 uh, all the time for your speeds, or 50 sine 35, or store it in your calculator uh, and, and avoid any kind of rounding errors. If you round this off to like 41 and 29, you're, you're going to have problems later on because you're going to compound your rounding if you're not very careful. Problem two. What are the horizontal and vertical components of the object's velocity when it reaches maximum height? So my object is now up here at its maximum height. What's the speeds? Uh, this is pretty easy. This is pretty simple. We can actually reason through this. In all projectile motion problems, the velocity in the x direction will never change because there's no acceleration. We're ignoring any kind of air resistance. And so in the x direction, it's unchanged. It's still 40.96 meters per second. In the y direction, it starts off with that initial speed in the y direction, which was 28.68 meters per second. And it's going to be slowing down the whole time. And when it reaches the maximum up here, it's just like in one dimensional motion. The speed in the y direction is just zero. So whenever something is at its maximum height, you know something about the velocities there. The x direction, the x speed never changes, and the y speed at maximum height is zero. Okay, physics is done here, easy. Question three. Find the time for this projectile to reach maximum height. So there's my projectile, and I want to know how long it takes to do this. So let's, uh, let's write down information. 
So I know that from the previous problem that my velocity in the y direction at maximum height is zero meters per second. I should have put a label on that, I forgot it. Uh, I know that my initial speed from number one uh, that we did, the initial speed was 28.68 meters per second in the y direction. The acceleration in the y direction is equal to g, little g, and is equal to negative 9.81 meters per square second. How do I solve for time? So I know everything except for the displacement, and so one of the big four equations that we have is vf equals vi plus at, and in this case, I've written it in vector format. So this is the y velocity final, the y of velocity initial, plus gravity, gravitational acceleration times time. So all I gotta do is replace all my information here. So the final velocity in the y direction is zero, because up here at the top in the y direction it's zero. That's 28.68, plus negative 9.81 is g, and so now what I have to do is solve for this, so I need to subtract the 28.68 over to the other side, so that's why there's a negative sign in here, and I need to divide by negative 9.81. The negatives will cancel out, we're gonna get a time then that is positive. If you get a negative time, that means you drop the negative sign somewhere. Um, so we've solved for this, so the time that I calculated was about 2.92 seconds. So it takes about 2.92 seconds to reach maximum height. So that's halfway through its parabolic path. Um, as you go through these, I recommend, I should have said this at the beginning, I recommend you try to work these out at the beginning. Then take a look at the answers and uh, see if we confirm. All right. Let's take a look at question number four. Find the height of that highest peak. So how high is it here? So what I'm looking for is this displacement in the y direction. So that's a y direction displacement. How high is that? Well, let's take a look at stuff I know. I know the maximum, uh, I'm sorry, I know the velocity in the y direction at its maximum is zero meters per second. I know the initial speed in the y direction from number one was 28.68 meters per second. We already solved for it. I know the acceleration is still g, and I know the time is 2.92 seconds. Now ideally, you wanna work these problems out so that you're not using numbers that you just calculated. So the 2.92, I can actually work this problem without it, so I would rather avoid that, because if you missed 2.92 in the previous part, you're gonna get this part wrong. So as much as you possibly can, still try to hold true to, to using just information that you have not calculated. Use information given or that you know. Now, later on, that's just gonna be impossible. We're gonna to have to calculate things and we're gonna to have to use it. So in this case, we can get away with it. We're not gonna use the time I just calculated. I'm gonna use this information here. So I know the um, y velocity, it's maximum. That's gonna be a final speed. And I know the initial speed down here at the cannon. So this is initial and up here at the top is the final. And I know acceleration. So what equation works? Well, we're going to go to the VF squared equals VI squared plus 2GD. And this is written in vector format because all of these, this is velocity final in the y direction, velocity in the y direction initial, and this is G, that's the acceleration in the y direction, and this is displacement in the y direction. So this is written in vector format now. Plug your numbers in. The final velocity in the y direction is zero because at the maximum, the speed in the y is zero. The initial speed in the y direction, 28.68, Square it, don't forget to square, common mistake. Plus two times the acceleration due to gravity times dy. So now we got an algebra problem. So I need to subtract the 28.68 squared over here. And I need to divide by two times negative 9.81. And I have forgotten a negative sign over here because I had to subtract it. There should be a negative sign right in front of that 28 right there. So that is equal to the displacement in the y direction. Without that negative sign in front of here, you're going to get a negative number, but it's gonna be positive. So, sorry about that. If you calculate this right by including the negative sign on this side so that it cancels out, we get a displacement in the y direction of 41.92 meters high. So that's how high off of the ground, uh, neglecting any kind of height that the cannon was at. We'll just assume it's very close to being right at ground level. All right. Question number five, and that's going to be the last one for this part of the video. And then part two is going to be the other five questions. 
So same problem, question five says, what's the total time of the object in the air? And we're gonna do this in two different ways. And uh, one of them, uh, the reason I do it the first way is because you gotta know how to do it the right way. And it just so happens there's kind of an easy trick to do it the, uh, the more easy way. So let's try uh, the first method. So we're starting over here with our projectile in the cannon just as soon as it fires and it has its initial speed and the projectile is landing over here at the right. So the first way to do this is uh, the first thing we need to analyze here is that the displacement in the y direction, it is starting and ending at the, the same basic height. We'll call it a height, the change of zero. So the displacement zero, it's starting and ending at the same point in the y direction. Now, okay, in reality, yeah, the cannon's a little bit higher, but we're gonna say that that height change is zero. From number one, we know the initial speed in the y direction is 28.68 meters per second. So if I wanna know the time it takes, I know an expression that has dy and viy in time, and that is this equation here, the displacement in the y direction is equal to one half gt squared plus the initial speed in the y times time. Plugging in numbers. Zero, zero is equal to this, is one half gt squared plus 28.68t. Now, this is actually pretty easy to solve. A lot of people look at this and they're like, ah, oh, I gotta use a quadratic formula. No, we don't have to use a quadratic formula. This is equal to zero. I've got t's in both terms, so I need to factor the t out. So I've shown it like this. I have factored a t out, and so I got a t outside here, so it's t times what's inside the black set of parentheses. And then I've colored everything inside the parentheses red. And what I've left behind is the one half times g times t, because one of the t's just got factored out, so it's not t squared anymore, plus 28.68t. And if you remember from your algebra class, that means that either t is equal to zero, which, duh, this projectile is at a displacement of zero at time zero because it hasn't launched yet. It hasn't been fired. So of course it's at time zero. So that's useless info to us. We're interested in this other time over here. So we're interested in this red part right here when it's equal to zero. So I take what's in red and that's one half times G times T plus 28.68. Set that equal to zero because either T is zero or what's in red is zero. So you set it equal to zero and now we solve. We need to subtract the 28.68 over to the other side. We need to multiply by two because I gotta get rid of the one half and I need to divide by negative 9.81. That's gonna equal our time and my time came out to be 5.84 seconds. That's the total time from firing to land. So almost six seconds total. So you gotta know how to do that, but there's an easier way to attack this problem and it's based on what we just talked about in problem number three. So the second idea here is we know from part problem three the time it took to go halfway. When it was halfway here, we calculated that it took 2.92 seconds. So guess what? If it took 2.92 seconds to go up here to the top, it's going to take another 2.92 seconds to go here because this is symmetric. There's no change in the displacement in the y direction. It's got the same height. So the total time, which I call t tot, is just double what time it is to go halfway. And that ends up being 5.84 seconds. Now you gotta be careful here because this just happens to be kind of a special case. And this is a special case because this only works because the path of the projectile is symmetric. If there was something over here to the right where the projectile was landing up here and dy was not equal to zero, that would not work because it wouldn't take the same amount of time to go down as it did to go up. So you have to be careful. This only works because it's a long, flat firing range. And so it's going to end at the same Y level that it started at. So you have to know how to do the first way. You can't always use this idea. But hopefully you understand both of these. All right, at this point, we're gonna break this into two parts and problems six through 10 are going to be in the second part of the video.